Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Ways. The International Day for the Remembrance of the Slave Trade and its Abolition is um, an international day celebrated on the 23rd of August each year. It was proclaimed by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, in 1998 to commemorate the transatlantic slave trade and its abolition. The date of 23rd of August was chosen to mark the beginning of the um, Haitian Revolution on 22nd August 1791. The Haitian Revolution was a major turning point in the history of the transatlantic um, slave trade as it was the first successful slave revolt that led to the establishment of an independent black republic. Slavery. Mm -hmm. I was watching, um, I, I stumbled on a documentary on, um, I think it was Netflix, where um, it was talking about the proliferation of Yoruba language mm. to South America, so Brazil, Cuba, um, there was somewhere, somewhere else um, as well. And then they showed this entire village in South Carolina in America called Oyotunji, mm. which apparently, so... Um, during the civil rights movement in, in the time of Martin Luther King and all of that, there was also like a corresponding movement of black Americans wanting to connect with Africa. Mm. Um, and so they created this village. It literally looks like the scene out of a Nollywood movie, right? Wow. Where they had a, so the first man African American that started it was the Oba. So now his son is the Oba. So I think the man has now passed, but the son, um, is now, you know, so it was all his royal highness, you know, and all of that. And then they had all these um, all, really old women. So they have like a ruling council, like mm -hmm. a council of mm -hmm. elders. And like when I watched it, so when they first started the documentary, they don't tell you that what you're looking at is not Africa. So they're just talking, you know, they show, um, uh, what's it called, Wida, the point of no return. Really. Yeah. They're showing all these aspects, Badagri, and, you know, talking about the history of slavery and the impact on West Africa. And, you know, they're interjecting it with scenes of, you know, people dancing in traditional Yoruba, you know, Rambuba and all of that. And then they go, do you think this is Africa? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. This is South Carolina. And I was like, eh? And the guy, who is the Oba now, actually speaks with a slight, like, African lilt in oh, terms of, in fact, know. most of them that they, they interviewed. So it's very interesting how people, um, particularly African-Americans, seeking out their roots. We that we're here. <laughs> we don't send, right? But, I mean, the, the slavery is, is something that, I mean, one, we should never forget because yeah. uh, it's such a symbolic part of, of history, it, and it's not just, I don't want to say just black history, but the history of the world. Um, and it's important that there are days like this to commemorate it. So I think Isi has joined us. Hi, Isi. Hello, Uti. Hi, I how are you? I recap of the story about the, the slavery. And Honestly, I just happened to stumble on the documentary and it was so good. It was so good. I love your glasses. I like to watch it. How's your day Thank going? You. How's it been? <laughs> Thank you. And you? I'm very well. Like we said, it's, it's a lot, but, you know, we move. Absolutely, absolutely. My take on that uh, aspect is that today we have another type of slavery, mm. which has to do with our mental state of mind. Mm. So we need to, you know, it, when I saw that um, um, uh, asset, what came to my mind, the first thing that actually came to my mind was the fact that um, we should listen to Bob Marley's song again. We need to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery and transcend beyond what we are today, basically. That's what actually came to my mind. So it's not just about the abolition of slavery. Yes, it has been abolished, but it has come in another way where we are the ones actually putting ourselves in a, in a box mm. and we are enslaving ourselves in a different way. I, and it's interesting that you do mention that. I think that some of the strategies that was applied in those days, mm. right, of making us feel that what was foreign was superior yeah. and um, exactly. what we had was inferior has actually stuck. Over the generations, we still see it play out um, and, and time and time again. So that's such an important point um, to make, Issy. Thank you for that. Um, what did you find for us I in the news? Oh, um. Okay, I, I, this story actually resonated with me because it had to do with uh, a young girl committing suicide. Mm. 
-hmm. And the title of the caption is, 14-year-old girl commits suicide for fear of continuous torture by her father and stepmother. Okay? Uh, I need to just give you a, the synopsis of what it's all about. She said a 14-year-old girl identified as Desola Adeoye yesterday committed suicide in Shogun Lake community, uh, community in Lagos State. Now, when this thing happened, the father, um, the, the wife of the father actually stated that she was going to be punished. And this young girl who is... 14 year old if a 14 year old was was scared so it was stated that in the story that she had already been going through some sort of domestic violence it's uh, it's kind of coincidental that we actually talked about domestic violence yesterday Jennifer if you can recall yeah. it was the violence day or something and when she was told this based on the fact that she has gone through so many things in the hands of her stepmom and her father she was scared and decided to take insecticide. And when she took the insecticide, she was rushed to the hospital and that was where she gave up her ghost. But the father took her home thinking that he could bury her secretly. And uh, the neighbors were the ones that actually raised the alarm and called the police in to step in. Now, I, I, this story actually resonated with me because we're talking about mental health today. Mental health is not just about the state of mind of the adults, it's also mm. the state of mind of the children and teenagers. And I would like to ask our guest today a thing or two about her experiences interacting when she stated that she's catching them young, what her, her experiences has been while she's interacting with them. Because my in my interaction with them, I have come to understand that these young ones are dealing with a lot and they don't have anybody to you know confide in this little girl would have had some sort of anxiety or depression in the process and she didn't have anybody to um you know step in and help her mm. so she just looked for the right next motive or next way to you know exit the problem yeah, she, so thought she, she, she was found she found her, her own solution even though it's the worst possible exactly. um, and saddest possible scenario that could happen to lose a life so young. Um, Absolutely. We, we, may she rest in peace. Um, Absolutely. Jennifer, what did you find for us? That's so sad. I know, right? All right. Um, so for me, gunmen abduct eight graduates traveling to NYC camp in Samfara. So I had a couple of graduates who were going from Uyo to, um, to Sokoto. And while in transit... <clears throat> while in transit they got attacked um, about three of them were able to escape but the remaining eight were were caught so according to the news they were traveling at night but however um the dg has already started working with um with security to try to locate where they are and um but then there was something that they made mention of and they said oh that they had talked about how risky it is to travel yeah. at night right and that um i mean for coppers typically when you're going to camp you are actually advised mm -hmm. that once it gets too dark you need to stay so where you are and then move in the morning yeah. right so I, I don't know what the urgency is but i really really hope that they get found and they're saved because i don't know with the state of things in the country eight graduates you know when you're leaving oh. home with the hope yeah, that you're your going whole future, to NYC your whole life is forget. ahead of you. Yeah. You've made it through the hurdle of, you know, University, education. yeah. I, I really so excited. Hope, you know, the more we hear about these stories, I, I fear, I, I mean, we've almost become desensitized to, to the kidnap situation because it's every other day. In fact, it's every day. Um, and, you know, it, it hurts when... I don't want to say it's preventable, but something like this that is um, is the, the NYC process that has such or had such positive foundations, yeah. right? Um, to find that we see periodically from time to time these stories about the different challenges coppers have to go through go today, through. parts of the country that is no longer safe for them to you know, be, be sent to to serve. Perhaps time to, to revisit the program. I, I, don't, I think that it's a very valuable program, just in terms of even getting us to interact more as ourse between ourselves as Nigerians. So 
the core crux of what that program was supposed to achieve is still so important. But mm -hmm. the safety and security of, of, you know, people, of young people in particular, um, who mm -hmm. essentially are, you know, the future of the country tomorrow, cannot be put at risk. So we hope that they're found. We yeah. hope that, you know, sometimes when you hear the amounts that are asked, are requested by, the, you know, these ransoms, it can be so, so disheartening. But we hope that they return, they're found um, safe and sound and returned. Um, so my story, very quickly, my headline says, Corn sellers cause insecurity in Abuja. And this was um, from the new minister of the Federal Capital Territory, um, Nissan Wiki, and he has prohibited street vending in Abuja, saying that street traders, including those selling corn, contribute to crime and instability. Um, he mentioned this at a meeting with the management staff of the FCT administration and FCT develop, um, Federal Capital Development Authority, um, urging them to prioritize doing what is right. Now, I mean, this story is not new, neither is it unique to this concept of street trading and the battle between street trading. I mean, here in Lagos as well, we see the government going toe to toe with it from time to time. We have the, um, what's that, uh, um, CSO, uh, Kai, kick against yeah, discipline Kai, as yeah. well. You see them from time to time with their trucks, rounding up these traders. Now, I look at both sides of the coin. I see that these people, um, yes, they shouldn't be trading on the streets. Yes, at night, um, people take advantage of it, or unscrupulous people take advantage of it to then, you know, rob, rob um, motorists and passengers. Mm. So I understand the sentiment behind it. I also understand, of course, from an aesthetic, you know, view of a city, you don't want to see people, you know, in traffic, hawking and selling things and things like that. Um, but the question always is, these people are doing it for survival. Right, so exactly. if you say I shouldn't do A, then you have to have a, B. exactly yeah. an option. So because there's so many people who are actually just hanging about doing nothing, mm. these people have proactively sought a way to sustain themselves. You know, so if we take away one opportunity, then there is a responsibility to say, you know what, it's a different thing if I say I provided you a market in A, B, C, yeah. and you choose not to go there, and mm. then I'm picking you up on the streets. But a lot of these yeah. people are just looking for, you know, ways to survive. Issy, did you want to add something? No, you practically nailed everything mm. in, in terms of survival. It's that's the whole essence of this. These mm. people are trying to look for look for a way to survive in this harsh economy that they found themselves. And this is a way to, you know, um, take food out of their mouth if they mm. do not have some sort of circle, like they have a place where they can go to to sell that yeah. was not provided for them so it's important that while we are take we are working we take we're doing something right with one hand we should actually um sort them out with the other hand yeah yeah absolutely all right um i think now we can take a quick break um and when we come back we'll um talk mental health and bring in our guests please stay with us <laughs> 